If you're looking to try something new in the new year, mixed media painting might be the perfect fit for you. In this video, I will be sharing my expertise and tips on how to use a range of mediums such as watercolors, gouache, color pencils and even oils and acrylics to create beautiful art without the use of toxic pigments or mediums. Not only will you learn how to make stunning pieces of art, but you will also avoid the drawbacks of traditional mediums like long drying times and toxic fumes. So let's get started. First and foremost, let's talk about the supplies you will need to get started. My favorite mixed media technique is based on watercolor as a foundation. So we are going to start with everything you need for watercolor painting. First, you will need a set of watercolor paints, a palette to mix your colors on, some watercolor paper and a few paint brushes. I personally prefer synthetic brushes as they can be more durable and are easier to replace if I happen to ruin them. You will also want to have a cup of water and a paper towel or a rag nearby to clean your brushes and get rid of excess paint. Brushes. You will want a variety of brushes with different shapes and sizes to give you the flexibility to create various effects. It's important to choose brushes that are suited to the mediums you will be using. Pointed tip brushes are ideal for watercolor painting, as they allow you to create fine details and precise lines. These brushes are also good for creating delicate brush strokes and for working in tight spaces. In addition to the shape of the brush, it's important to consider the thickness of the brush body. A brush with a thick body can hold more water, which is essential for watercolor painting. Flat brushes are a great choice for applying gouache, acrylic and oil paint, as they have a wide surface area that allows you to cover large areas quickly and evenly. These brushes are also good for creating straight lines and precise edges. Ultimately, the best brushes for mixed media painting are those that allow you to achieve the effects you desire and support your artistic vision. Experiment with different shapes, sizes and brands of brushes to find the ones that work best for you. Paper. The type of paper you choose will depend on the media you're using and the desired effects you want to achieve. If you are planning on combining watercolor, gouache, color pencils, or acrylics or even oil pastels in your mixed media artwork, hot press watercolor paper is an excellent choice. It has a smooth, fine surface that is ideal for these mediums, as it allows for a high level of detail and precise application. Additionally, hot press paper is sturdy and able to hold up well to multiple layers of media, making it a great choice for mixed media artwork that includes heavier elements like gouache, acrylic or oil pastels. So if you are looking to create a mixed media piece that combines a wide range of mediums, hot press watercolor paper is a great choice due to its smoothness and sturdiness. While cold pressed watercolor paper can be a great choice for certain techniques, it may not be the best option for techniques which involve multiple mediums. One of the main reasons for this is that cold pressed paper has a rough textured surface that can make it difficult to apply certain mediums, particularly those that require precise application or fine detail. The rough surface of cold pressed paper can also make it challenging to blend different mediums together, as the texture can interfere with the flow of the paint or other media. So while cold pressed paper can be a good choice for certain techniques, it may not be the best option for mixed media artwork that involves a wide range of mediums. Now, if you are looking to learn more about these mediums, materials and techniques and want to take your art skills to the next level, I invite you to check out my Patreon membership. As a student, you will get access to over 200 step-by-step -step video tutorials that teach you everything you need to know about my mixed media painting techniques, like for example my art supply foundation course or my in-depth reference photo guide. Create realistic stunning paintings with watercolors, color pencils, gouache, oils or acrylics. Follow the link in the video description to join and start learning from me today. Paints. For mixed media painting, you will want to have a range of paint options at your disposal. Watercolor paints are a good choice for their transparency and ability to blend. But you may also want to consider adding in color pencils, gouache or even acrylic or oil paints for their opacity and ability to build up layers. One important thing to keep in mind is that it's possible to paint with oils over acrylics without any preparation of the artwork, but if you plan on painting with oils or acrylics over a watercolor painting, it's important to prepare the artwork with a fixative and gesso before applying the oil paint to prevent smearing the paint. 
This will help to ensure that your oil or acrylic paint adheres properly and maintains its integrity. Combining watercolors with acrylics or oils can create astonishing effects in your mixed media artwork. Watercolors are known for their transparency and ability to create fresh, light washes of color while acrylics and oils are great to create depth and intensity. When you combine these mediums, you can take advantage of the best of both worlds. One of the main benefits of combining watercolors with an opaque medium, such as gouache or acrylics, is that it allows you to create a wide range of effects and textures. Watercolors can be used to create delicate, subtle washes of color, while gouache, acrylics or oils can be used to build up layers and create more opaque, intense areas of color. By layering these mediums, you can create artworks that have a lot of visual interest and depth. By combining these mediums, it also allows you to take advantage of the unique properties of each medium. And to top it off, color pencils can be used to work out complicated details and to create perfectly blended areas that you need in a portrait, for example. By using these mediums together, you can create artworks that are full of movement and energy, as well as areas of more refined detail. Gouache paint is also a great option for those looking for a middle way between transparent mediums like watercolors and opaque mediums like acrylics or oils. One of the main benefits of gouache is that it can be used to correct mistakes, as it is easily removable and can be painted over one dry. This makes it a great choice for artists who want the flexibility to make changes to their artwork as they go. Another advantage of gouache is that it allows for both transparent and opaque paint applications, depending on how much water is used. This makes it a versatile medium that can be used to create a wide range of effects and textures. Here, for example, I used it to both add highlights on my portrait and to add a subtle wash of white blue on the skin. Additionally, gouache does not require any preparation of the artwork beforehand, making it a convenient choice for mixed media artworks. Overall, gouache is a great option for those looking to combine the best of both worlds when it comes to transparent and opaque mediums. It's a good idea to experiment with different brands and types of paint to see what works best for you. And don't be afraid to mix and match different mediums. The possibilities are endless when it comes to mixed media painting. And if you want to know what my favorite paints, brushes, paper and other art supplies are, just have a look at the video description, where I added a full list of my favorite art supplies. As an artist who has extensively experimented with watercolor, acrylics, oils and gouache, I can personally attest to the fact that combining these mediums can create stunning effects in your mixed media artwork. It's a winning combination that allows me to create a wide range of effects and textures. Through my own experiences, I have found that each of these mediums has its own unique properties and strengths, and by combining them, you can create artworks that are full of depth, intensity and freshness. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced artist, I highly recommend giving these mediums a try and seeing what you can create. The possibilities are endless. One tool that every mixed media artist should have in their arsenal is masking fluid. If you're looking to add some precise details to your mixed media paintings, masking fluid can be a lifesaver. This special medium allows you to preserve white space and create clean lines in your artwork, making it easy to add in small details later on. And the best part? Masking fluid isn't just limited to watercolor painting. It can also be used on acrylics to achieve similar effects. So why not give it a try and see what it can do for your art? Other materials. In addition to traditional painting supplies, there are many other materials that can be used in mixed media art. This can include collage elements like paper, fabric or found objects, as well as pens, markers and other drawing tools. Consider what materials and techniques will help you achieve the look and feel you want for your artwork. Ultimately, the best materials for mixed media painting are those that allow you to create the effects you desire and express your artistic vision. Don't be afraid to experiment and try out new materials. You never know what you might discover. Once you gathered all your supplies, it's time to start thinking about your subject matter. Watercolor and mixed media painting can be used to depict almost anything, from landscapes and still lives to abstract composition and portraits. As an artist, I am constantly inspired by the natural world and antiquity, and often use flowers, plants and mythological figures as the subject of my paintings. Consider what inspires you and shows the subject that you feel passionately about. Next, consider your composition. This refers to the arrangement of elements within your painting, such as the placement of objects, the use of negative space and the overall color palette. 
I always take at least a day to prepare my composition before I start painting, as this helps me visualize the final result and make any necessary adjustments. I use digital tools such as Photoshop to create compositions as I find it quicker and more effective than doing my sketching per hand. I also find that using reference images either from my own photographs or those generated using tools like Midjourney AI can be especially helpful in this process. I often use Midjourney AI to create reference images for my artwork that I furthermore refine or alter in Photoshop to create the exact image I imagined. To use Midjourney, you just input a description or image of your desired subject matter and the AI will generate an image that you can use as a starting point for your painting. This can be especially helpful if you are struggling to come up with ideas or compositions on your own. Once you have an image created with Midjourney AI, you can use Photoshop or Dolly AI to make further refinements and corrections to the image. By the way, you can of course use any image editing software besides Photoshop, in case you don't have access to it. For example, like Clip Studio Paint, Affinity Photo or GIMP. You can experiment with Dolly to edit your reference. I used it a few times and the results were very helpful. Here for example, I used it to give my Nordic inspired model a Viking helmet. You can simply upload your sketch to Dolly, erase the part you want to change and Dolly will create a few variations for you to choose from. It doesn't always work out, so some patience is needed for sure. By using these tools in conjunction with one another, you can quickly and easily create and generate ideas and compositions for your paintings and make any necessary refinements to finalize your ideas. This can be a great time saver and can help you get your creative juices flowing as you work on your art. These tools can be very helpful for artists who want to create artwork quickly and efficiently or who are looking for new or innovative ways to generate ideas. When it comes to actually painting, there are a few key techniques you need to know. These include wet on wet technique. This involves applying wet watercolor paint to wet surface, resulting in softer, more diffuse edges and a more blended appearance. Dry brush technique. This works best with opaque mediums, but can also be done with watercolors. It involves applying paint to a dry surface using a brush that is only slightly damp, creating rough textured strokes. Glazing. Also works with watercolors, acrylics or oils, not so much with gouache. This involves applying a thin layer of transparent paint over a dry layer of paint, creating a luminous, glass-like effect. Negative painting. This involves painting around the subject matter rather than the subject itself, creating a sense of depth and form through the use of negative space. Circling. This is a color pencil technique which involves using small circular motions. To create smooth uniform coverage, it is important to keep the pressure light at first and raise it the more pigments you apply on your paper. The marks created should resemble a continuous scribble, but should be tight and uniform. By practicing this technique, you can achieve a smooth, even coverage in your paintings. Burnishing. For this color pencil technique, you need wax-based pencils, such as Luminance Pencils by Caron Dash, to create a smooth, even finish on your artwork. To burnish, you apply the pencil with rising pressure to the surface of your artwork, creating a wax coat that removes the paper texture and grain. Burnishing should be done carefully to avoid creating patchy or blotchy areas, as the high pigmentation of the pencil can make it easy to overapply the color. When done correctly though, burnishing can create a beautiful, even finish on your artwork. One of my preferred techniques when working with watercolors involves starting with a light base layer and gradually adding darker shades through layering to create dimension in the painting. To add detail and depth to the watercolor layers, I use color pencils and gouache. To enhance the vibrancy and depth of the final piece, I sometimes even add a final layer of thin acrylic washes, like here in my mermaid painting. By using these techniques in combination with watercolors, you can create stunning artworks that are full of depth, detail and intensity. And to give you a few final tips on your way so that you can really take off with your art in 2023, don't forget to experiment. Don't be afraid to try new techniques and approaches to see what works best for you. Mixed media painting offer endless possibilities for creativity and self-expression. Don't be afraid to mix and match different materials or add in your own personal touches and flair. Observe. Pay attention to the world around you and use your observations to inform your art. As you work on your painting, remember to take breaks and step back from your artwork to get a fresh perspective. It's also a good idea to photograph your work in progress. 
as this can help you see it from a different angle and identify areas that may need more attention. Be patient. Watercolor and mixed media can be unpredictable, so be patient and take your time to achieve the results you want. Practice. The more you practice, the better you will become at using watercolors and mixed media. Don't be afraid to make mistakes and learn from them. By mastering these techniques and skills, you will be well on your way to creating beautiful dynamic artworks with watercolors and mixed media. For a more in-depth documentation of my techniques, I invite you to watch my YouTube channel, which is entirely dedicated to my painting techniques, or to become a patron if you are serious about learning to paint with mixed media and if you want to bring your art to the next level. I hope these tips and insights have been helpful to you and have given you a good starting point for your painting journey. I wish you all a very inspiring and creative new year and I see you in the next video. Bye!